Why is my ex moving on so fast after our breakup? This is a common thing that I've heard a lot of people talk about, and so we're going to be discussing this in this video. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey there, it's Clay with modernlove.life. And one thing that I've noticed a lot, especially in recent times, you know, I've been doing this since 2009, and one thing I've noticed sort of at an accelerating rate is that people's exes are getting into new relationships much more quickly these days than they were, you know, 10 years ago or so. There's a couple things that are going on, um, psychologically speaking anyway. Uh, the first is that oftentimes after a breakup, people, you know, they find themselves single and they have this pressure to sort of get into a relationship. Like for whatever reason in our society, we have this belief that like, hey, everyone wants to be in a relationship. It's bad if you're not in a relationship. There's something wrong with you if you're not in a relationship or you're not dating someone. We need to not be single and we need to put this pressure on ourselves to rush into some sort of relationship as quickly as possible. I, I know a lot of people feel this way. Just so you know, my personal belief on all of this is that it's okay to be single if that's what serves you and that is what's best for you right now. It's also okay to be in a relationship. It's also okay to be dating. It's also okay to be like wherever you are, but there's nothing wrong with being single. And it's totally okay if you are that way. I don't want to, I don't want you to feel as if there's this external judgment being placed upon you that there's something wrong with you if you're single, because there's not, unless you just genuinely want to be in a relationship. But like, yeah, I don't want you to take out this, this belief from other people that says like, oh, hey, yeah, Oh gosh, you know, I've been I've been single for, you know, whatever X months or X years or whatever. Jeez, there must be something wrong. Like if you're feeling totally fulfilled and satisfied, that's okay. But for whatever reason, there is this external pressure on a lot of people and your ex may feel this and it may cause them to go out and get into some sort of new relationship or to date very quickly. Um, the second thing that could be causing this, uh, by the way, is this sort of moving on race that a lot of people feel after a breakup. Now, of course, there's all that external pressure that I just talked about, but also for whatever reason as well too, we sort of feel this societal pressure that like, okay, there's a breakup that's happened. Now we gotta go on this race to find out which one of us is gonna move on the fastest, which one of us is gonna get into a new relationship first, because if I get into a relationship first before you, then that means that you know I'm a more desirable person and that uh, I win or that uh, you know you, made some sort of breakup, um, made some sort of mistake by breaking up with me or something like that, right? And so there's often this sort of race implicitly understood or spoken between two people after a breakup that says, hey, we need to try to get into a relationship as quickly as possible to compete with one another to see who could be in a relationship first. Is that something that you've experienced, by the way? Go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know if that's something that you have experienced uh, during this whole breakup process, this whole pressure to either be in a relationship as quickly as possible or to move on from your ex in order to sort of compete with them. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Most of the time, this and maybe other factors as well too are a huge setup for, of course, rebound relationships. Being emotionally unavailable after a breakup is really common. Most people are emotionally unavailable in some capacity after a breakup because, you know, breakups can be emotionally devastating experiences for a lot of people. It's understandable. You might have some big feelings that come up as the result of that. And uh, what we want to do is um, instead of just playing into that and getting into a rebound relationship, which is basically just saying like, hey, I'm more in love with the idea of being in a relationship or the idea of, of thinking that I've moved on from my ex or the idea of winning the moving on race or the idea of you know having someone really super attractive in my life so that my ex feels jealous or uh, you know whatever else it might be. When we're more focused on that than we are on like, hey, here's a human being in front of me. I feel this person's soul. I feel this person's heart. We're so connected. We're so vibing with one another. We have so much in common. We have these compatibilities. We have this shared vision of life. When you're more focused on the idea than this natural organic relationship, then you're setting yourself up for 
a rebound relationship because of emotional unavailability. You know, we've had a whole video playlist on emotional unavailability. Please go ahead and check it out right up there. It's very complex and difficult as well as a video playlist on rebound relationships as well too. Go ahead and check those out up there as well too. Um, there are these psychological things that people do in rebound relationships that are very strange. When you look at it from the outside, it might make you think, oh, hey, I've been replaced super easily. They never cared about me, etc." But if you understand what's going on psychologically, it can make a lot of sense. Anyway, if you want to learn more about that, please go ahead and check out this video series over here on rebound relationships. Or again, just go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know what your experience has been through this whole breakup. Do you feel this pressure to move on quickly or anything else? Anyway, talk to you next time. Take care.